Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. Uh, we will be uh, looking into the, uh, you will be, as we have talked in the last class, we have finished the, uh, the modeling uh, aspects of osmotic pressure control filtration in a cross flow system. Now, we will be talking about the importance of unstart batch system and do things, uh, and then we will be uh, looking into the modeling of unstart batch filtration system, membrane filtration system. Why the unstirred batch system is important that has to be understood first, because if if, if we are talking dealing with a uh, with a real time uh, with a solution having a solute uh, with with known properties, then it is very easy to solve uh, uh, the system using a predictive mode. But suppose we are talking about an industrial effluent or a, or a fruit juice or an unknown or real life application where there will be not a single component. There are many comp co components present into the system and it is very difficult to identify each and every component number one. Number two is that even if you identify every majority of components, then it will be quite difficult to uh, you know estimate their concentration. Even if you estimate the concentration, now it's very, it will be very difficult to estimate their physical property of each and individual material component. For example, their diffusivity, osmotic pressure of the solution, things like that. So, therefore, uh, what is generally done, one has to take an effective diffusivity and uh, effective osmotic pressure with a um, variation of concentration. Concentration may be in terms of total solids or total dissolved solid solids based on the system and, and you will be having an effective osmotic pressure coefficient A 1 C plus A 2 C square plus A 3 C cube. This A 1, A 2, A 3 may be the uh, uh, you know um, uh, the effective coefficients of osmotic pressure. So, let us write down what are the various parameters those will be appearing A 1 C plus A 2 C square plus A 3 C cube that will be the osmotic pressure of the solution, but we do not know the values of A 1, A 2, A 3. And even if you, uh, if you can know if you have a, an accurate osmometer, but if you, if you, you do not know the value of effective diffusivity, effective viscosity and viscosity can be measured of course, but the diffusivity value cannot be known. So, it will be, so in, in a typical system you will be having four unknowns, the osmotic coefficients A 1, A 2, A 3 and diffusivity, effective diffusivity of the system. So, the how, how this system is then modeled, then what we, what is generally done, we conduct large number of experiments, you know uh, uh, the, the order of 30, 40 large number of experiments and vary the operating conditions and see the permeate flux and permeate concentration uh, and maybe in terms of total solids or maybe in terms of total dissolved solids. Once this is done, then the then we, we uh, take we uh, go through the model, but we we get we have a uh, have a profile optimization or the optimization with respect to the experimental values. So, we have a guess values, we do a guess values of A 1, A 2, A 3 or D then we go to the model, solve the model, get the calculated value of permeate flux and permeate concentration for different operating conditions and then we come, we compare those values with the experimental data. That means, we, we minimize the sum C p calculated minus C p experimental divided by C p experimental square of that plus V w calculated minus V w experimental by V w experimental square of that. We minimize the sum and compare and optimize the whole system and compare with the experimental data and the model calculated data. Then if this uh, uh, sum is, 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 not less, uh, is not less than a tolerance value, then again we have to redo a uh, you know re guess this set of parameters which will be you know directed by a proper algorithm or minimization algorithm or optimization algorithm. So, during an, so we will be doing an optimization method, 
optimization for evaluating the system parameters. So, then A 1, A 2, A 3 and D of the system will be predicted, will be, will be estimated. Once this will be estimated, then for an unknown operating conditions, we can run the our model equations in a predictive mode in order to, to predict the system performance. So, what is the drawback of the system? If you really do a cross flow system, then every cross flow system will be under a particular set of operating condition will be giving you one value of permeate concentration and permeate flux, but you will be you require probably huge number of experiments. So, therefore, you have to conduct the cross flow experiment large number of times maybe 40 times 50 times in order to generate uh, you know 40 50 values of permeate concentration and permeate flux and uh, so that you can optimize the four parameters A 1 to A 3 and D effective. Now, that will be um, you know incurring uh, then you will be incurring more cost manpower energy um, uh, so uh, and material uh, to, to conduct those experiments. On the other hand, if you can conduct a batch cell experiment, the the permeate in a in a typical batch cell, the um, uh, because of the growth of the mass transfer boundary layer, one will be uh, getting the permeate flux and permeate concentration profile of that as a function of as a function of time. So you will be getting the n number of data. So this will be th these will be the parameters and as a function of time, the permeate flux will keep on decreasing as a function of time. This will be the permeate flux P w the non dimensional permeate flux and this how the permeate concentration non dimensional permeate concentration keep on growing as a function of time. So, what you can do at any fixed time intervals you can measure the permeate concentration and permeate flux. So, you can keep on measuring them you conduct an experiments for 5 hours one ex single experiments for 5 hours and then you can measure n number of values of permeate concentration and per, you know pair of permeate concentration and permeate flux at different time points. So, therefore, if some from a single experiment one can generate data 50 60 data if you take a run of let us say 2 hours or 3 hours and if you if you take you know data accurately within every 10 minutes or 5 minutes. So, depending on the duration of the experiment one can collect large number of data and those data can be minimized by doing an optimization. So, that is known as the profile optimization. So, you, you have the uh, you know model value of permeate flux profile and model value of calculated value of permeate concentration profile. You measure the uh, 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 experimental values and plot the experimental values like this. And from a single experiment, single batch cell experiment, one can get a large number of data. That is why the modeling of the batch cell alumino you know, filtration setup is very, very important and we will be looking into how this modeling can be done. So, for an actual real system, the rigor of experiment can be reduced or in order to estimate the parameters quite easily from the batch cell experiment. So, let us look into the modeling of the batch cell experiment. What is a batch cell? So, it is basically a pressure vessel having three parts. There will be a top flange, there will be a body or shell, there will be a bottom flange and this in the bottom flange it will be a circular disc. So, here you will be placing the membrane and in the top flange and all these will be connect, uh, you know, uh, uh, connected to the uh, uh, filtration bo you know, body of the cell by using nuts and bolts and then it will be pressurized by a nitrogen cylinder. But before that you fill up the cell with let us say 500 ml or 700 ml of solution. So, what will be let us write down. So, there will be a growth of concentration boundary layer over the membrane surface as we have um, seen al uh, earlier, but in this case there is a difference. The difference is that in the case of the cross flow filtration the growth of the mass transfer boundary layer will be restricted or arrested by the cross flow of the retentate flow. But in this case, so there will be a steady state reached in case of the cross flow filtration, but in the case of unstirred batch cell there is no external agent to curb or arrest the growth of the boundary layer. Hence, it will be uh, growing uh, uh, undisturbed and the permeate flux will keep on decreasing as a function of time and permeate concentration will keep on increasing as a function of time. So, there will be no 
attainment of steady state that is the uh, unlike the cross flow filtration cell that is the typical characteristic of a batch cell. No attainment of the steady state. So, thus what we will do next we will write down the solute mass balance. within mass transfer boundary layer. So, if you write it del C del T minus uh, uh, plus V del C del Y is equal to D del square C del Y square. Since mass transfer boundary layer is small, we can assume V is equal to minus V W. So, that is coming out and in this case V W will be function of time. So, del C del T will be minus V w del C del y is equal to D del square C del y square. So, now let, let us set the boundary set up the boundary conditions at t is equal to 0, c is equal to c naught at y is equal to infinity as argued earlier c is equal to c naught at y is equal to 0 we have uh, the uh, uh, all, all the uh, pseudo steady state boundary condition all the mass fluxes towards membrane surface will be equal to 0. So, V w C m minus C p plus D del C del y will be equal to 0. So, we the, this will set up the governing equation and the three boundary conditions. Next what we will do? We, we do we make the system non dimensional from the very beginning. So, let us do that. So, we define this non dimensional parameters as c star is equal to c by c naught, uh, y star is equal to y by r, r is the radius of the batch cell. So, now let us look into the governing equation. So, this becomes del c star del t minus v w del c star r del y star and d del square c star divided by r square del y star square okay? now multiplied by r square by d. So, it becomes r square by d del c star del t minus v w r over t del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. So, the right hand side is completely non dimensional the second term in the left hand side the this is non dimensional. So, this is again non dimensional permeate flux in this case. So, here c star is non dimensional t is dimensional that means, t d by r square has to be non dimensional. So, that means, we, we, we define non dimensional time as t d divided by r square. So, this becomes del c star del tau minus p w del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. So, this is the governing equation where p w is equal to v w r over d. Okay. And now, we will be looking we will be making the boundary conditions to be non dimensional as well. So, at tau is equal to 0 c star is equal to 1 at y star is equal to 0 del c star del y star plus p w c m star r r equal to 0 at y star is equal to infinity c star is equal to 1. So, that sets up the governing equation and the boundary condition. So, next again we will be looking we will be taking recourse to the similarity solution because this is a parabolic partial differential equation and one of the boundary is residing at infinity. So, we can have a similarity solution. So, let us have a similarity solution and before that we have to find out what is the similarity parameter. So, again we will be doing the same order of magnitude by evaluating this concentration profile at the edge of the boundary layer. So, this will be if we really do that del c star 
will be delta c star and delta tau will be tau minus 0, the second term will be gone. So, that will be delta c star divided by delta square. So, delta square will be function will be will be will be uh, varying as under root over tau in this case. So, now you will be getting a similarity parameter, similarity parameter is y star by del star and it will be y star by root over tau. So, that will be the similarity parameter we will be working with in this particular problem. Next, as we have done earlier, we will be you know replacing all the partial derivative in the governing equation in terms of the similarity parameter and let us first find out the similar the partial derivative of the, uh, the those will be appearing in the governing equation in terms of the similarity parameter. Once we get those expression, we are going to substitute those expressions in the governing equation. So, del c star del, t, del tau will be nothing but d c star d eta del eta del tau and this becomes minus 1 by 2 y star tau root tau d c star d eta and y star by root tau is nothing but eta, this is nothing but eta by 2 d c star d eta. Then del c star del y star becomes d c star d eta del eta del y star and this becomes 1 over root over tau d c star d eta and del square c star del y star square is del del y star del c star del y star and this becomes 1 over tau d square c star d eta square. So, now we are going to substitute these partial derivatives in the governing equation and see what we get. So, what we get is that d square c star d eta square is equal to minus eta by 2 plus v w root over tau d c star d eta. And as we have already seen that uh, uh, the delta v w is inversely proportional to the delta. So, this will be p w right. p w is inversely proportional to uh, delta star and delta star is directly proportional to root over tau. Therefore, p w root over tau is constant and this constant let us say this is a. If that is the case, then the ordinary differential equation of second order now becomes minus eta by 2 plus a d c star d eta and now we change the boundary conditions in terms of similarity parameter eta, eta equal to 0 d c star d eta plus a c m star r r equal to 0 and at eta equal to infinity c star is equal to 1. So, now we can we will be able to solve this equation. So, d c star. So, solution is as we have seen earlier d c star d eta is equal to k 1 exponential minus eta square by 4 minus a eta and then one more integration will be giving you c star as a function of eta k 1 exponential minus eta square by 4 minus a eta d eta plus k 2. And then using the boundary conditions, uh, these two boundary conditions one can evaluate the integration constants k 1 and k 2 as uh, k 1 plus a r r k 2 is equal to 0 and k 1 i 1 plus k 2 is equal to 1. So, where i 1 is basically the definite integral 0 to infinity p exponential minus eta square by 4 minus a eta d eta. 
okay, and k 1 becomes minus a r r 1 minus a r r i 1 and k 2 is nothing but c m star is equal to 1 over 1 minus a r r i 1 and we have the osmotic pressure model. So, um, uh, Darcy's law through the porous medium porous membrane p w as a function of time will be nothing but b into 1 minus delta pi by delta p and we have already seen that delta pi can be expressed as a function of c m star. So, now the uh, modeling model equations complete let us look into the algorithm of calculation. The algorithm calculation is very simple first at a particular at a particular time point tau uh, we do following one guess c m star evaluate p w from equation one once you get p m w from equation one then you can get the expression of a from a from expression of a, 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 a can be evaluated written from expression of p w. Okay. Once that is done, then you can evaluate i 1 from equation 2. Once that is done, one can evaluate C m star from equation 3. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the equation expression of p w is nothing but uh, a is equal to p w root over tau. So, a is equal to p w root over tau. So, at that particular tau we put the value of tau we have already evaluated p w. So, p w multiplied root over tau will be giving you the value of a substitute a in integral i 1 and evaluate the definite integral using trapezoidal rule and get the value of i 1 from equation 2 and from equation 3 you will be getting the value of c m star and check whether this calculated c m star now c m star calculated minus c m star guess they are less than epsilon or not. If they are less than epsilon then you go for the next time step t plus delta t if not then you have to reguess the value of c m star and repeat the iterative calculation. So, in the process what you will be getting is that in the process you will be ultimately getting c m star as a function of time, c p star as a function of time and p w as a function of time. So, ultimately you will be getting p w as a function of time and c p star as a function of time and you will be having the measurement measured value of p w at different time points and measured value of c p star different time points then you can do the optimization and can estimate the system parameters. So, that is how the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the batch cell filtration can be done. So, this completes our whole uh, you know formulation for the modeling or content for the modeling of um, uh, of the osmotic pressure filtration both in the cross flow cell and the batch cell from one dimensional model we first started with the one dimensional model we went ahead with the two dimensional model and by 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 observing several shortcomings of the one dimensional model and we have seen that one dimensional model will really give the under prediction of permeate flux and therefore we went ahead with the two dimensional model completely solved the two dimensional model for the uh, cross pose filter filtration system as well as the batch system filtration system. And also, we have iterated that uh, discussed about the importance of the batch cell, why it is so important for a for evaluating the system parameters or the process parameters whenever you will be working with a real industrial fluid or a real fluid sample. Next type of 
field mo you know modeling will be looking into the gel layer control modeling. Under two circumstances, a gel or highly viscous solution is prepared on the membrane uh, is, is formed on the membrane surface. There are two ways. First ways is first way is that uh, the the filtration may be osmotic pressure controlled initially. And then uh, during the osmotic pressure control filtration membrane surface solute concentration on the membrane surface keep on increasing as you move downstream of the channel and therefore, at a particular location it may happen that it exceeds the solubility limit, exceeds or approaches the solubility limit. In that case, once it, 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 it does that then a very uh, viscous solution is formed near membrane surface and if the solubility limit is exceeded at that particular temperature there may be precipitation of the solute as a solid phase or there may be another way is a natural gel forming agents. There are some natural gel forming agents for example, polyvinyl alcohol pectin etcetera. These solutes they form a gel over the membrane surface from the very beginning. So, you do not need to give time for them to for formation of the gel, they already form they from the very beginning of the filtration they form a solid gel type of uh, uh, they form a highly viscous uh, solution uh, highly viscous layer near the membrane surface. And this gel keeps on growing in time with, with the time of operation or duration of operation or in the in the in the y direction over the membrane surface. So, there are two typical ways how the gel is formed and in the next class we will be looking into the various types of uh, you know uh, gel polarization model and uh, how the various parameters will be estimated in a typical gel for polarization model which will be basically will be taking q from the classical filtration theory and and uh, and combine it and we will bring those you know concepts in the gel layer formation and then we will be looking into the how the gel layer modeling can be done thank you very much